One machine helped me start my business. The other took it to the next level. If you're stuck between a budget laser and an industrial one, this could be the most important video you watch. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brett and this is my laser garage. Me and my wife run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you out with your laser or CNC business. I've been running a laser business for years now, and over that time, I've owned everything from a hobby-grade laser to full industrial machines like the ones from Thunder Laser. So if you're wondering whether it's worth spending a couple thousand bucks on an entry-level CO2 laser or dropping more on something industrial, today's video is going to break that down for you. We'll talk about build quality, tech support, speed, and power. The stuff that actually matters when you're running a laser business or a serious side hustle. To begin, I wanna share a bit of my own journey because I've been exactly where many of you are right now. When I first started, I was on a tight budget. I bought a hobby level CO2 laser because it was what I could afford and honestly, it was a great way to get started. I've even made an entire video series using that budget machine and I said a lot of good things about it because for where I was at the time, it served its purpose very well. And if you're curious about those videos or want more info on getting started with a lower cost laser, I absolutely encourage you to check them out. I stand by what I said in those reviews because they were honest reflections of my experience at that time. But as I grew my business and started doing more volume, I realized that I had outgrown what those machines could offer. I needed faster production, better reliability, and stronger support. That's when I made the shift to Thunder Laser. Now, I wanna to be totally transparent. I have purchased all of my Thunder Lasers with my own money, all four of them. I am a Thunder Laser brand ambassador currently though, but that role came after I bought and used the machines in my own shop. I've had great experiences with them, and I genuinely love what they have to offer, especially for people in a position like mine, running a laser business day in and day out. That's why I speak so confidently about them, because I've truly been on both sides of this conversation. My priorities changed, my experience evolved, and this video reflects where I am now. Let's start with quality control. Most hobby machines, especially the ones you find on Amazon or direct from overseas, don't have consistent quality control. I've had machines show up with mirrors out of alignment, wiring loose, or even missing pieces. You basically become your own assembly technician. You have to understand that you're simply not paying a budget laser company for this service. They have to lower costs in this and other areas in order to get their prices down. This doesn't mean you can't get a budget laser to work out of the box. I mean, I've had many do that but you just don't know what you're gonna get. Now compare that to Thunder Laser. These machines go through extensive testing before they ever leave the factory. Electronics and motors are checked, power supplies and laser tubes are extensively tested. Heck, Thunder won't even install a tube in a machine unless it outputs over its stated power. So if you buy a 100 watt machine from Thunder, you know you're getting a 100 watt machine, not a 90 or 95 watt laser. When my Thunders arrived, and I purchased four of them now, they were aligned, fully functional, and ready to run within a half hour of uncrating and setup. If you're a hobbyist just tinkering, you might tolerate a few hiccups, but if you're running a business, downtime costs you money, and quality control makes a huge difference. Next up, build quality. Budget lasers often use lightweight frames and lower grade components. You'll see thinner sheet metal, lower grade wiring harnesses and terminations, plastic fasteners, and low-end optics. It can work, but it's not specifically designed and built for heavy, continuous use. Thunder Laser, completely different story. We're talking powder-coated steel chassis, industrial wiring harnesses specifically designed and built for the North American 110-volt market, high-end Ruida controllers, strong linear rails and stepper motors, the kind of stuff that holds up over years of daily use and in a production setting. You can feel it just opening the lid, solid, smooth, and reliable. The difference in material and construction gives you consistency, which is key when you're cranking out orders. I spoke about laser tubes in the last segment, but here's another point on that topic. If you didn't know, CO2 laser tubes are a consumable part of the machine. 
the gases inside the tube are depleted by everyday use and eventually will run out. But here's something you may not have known. This gas can also deplete slowly just by sitting on a shelf or in a warehouse. You may buy a budget laser, open it up, and see your tube was manufactured many years in the past. Not gonna happen with Thunder. Plus, Thunder Laser offers a wide variety of machines that include radio frequency or RF CO2 laser tubes, like what's in my Bolts and my Bolt Pro 32 behind me. These offer a wide variety of benefits over glass DC style tubes, and I have a whole video talking about them here if you're interested in learning more. My main point is this, Thunder is constantly evolving and adding new technologies to their lasers, and it's gonna be exciting to see what they have coming up next. I hear we may be seeing a new machine lineup this summer. Can't wait to see more about that. Next, let's talk about one of, if not the biggest concern for new users, tech support. With budget machines, it's pretty simple. You're on your own for the most part. If you have an issue, you're mostly relying on forums or YouTube and hoping someone in one of those groups has had your same problem and actually has the correct solution for it. If you do get support from the manufacturer, be prepared to wait days for a response or 10 to 12 hours usually between responses. Do mostly to time zone differences and don't even think about talking to someone on the phone. It's just not gonna happen. Thunder laser though, 180 degree difference in experience. Their US-based tech support team is packed with laser experts who are responsive, knowledgeable, and easy to get a hold of. During business hours, my experience has been getting responses back in less than 10 minutes. But what about after hours? Listen to this and decide for yourself. I was working on a few projects this year on Super Bowl Sunday. My bolt suddenly turned off mid-project and wouldn't turn back on. I went through a few basic troubleshooting items like checking my breaker, power cable, plus a few other things. Basically, I concluded that possibly it was the key switch that may be bad. So I decided to write a quick email to Thunder Support just to open up a support ticket. Fully expecting for understandable and reasonable reasons that no one would see it or respond because it was not only Sunday, but Super Bowl Sunday. I couldn't have been more wrong. Less than 10 minutes later, I get a response back from Chris with tech support offering suggestions. Long story short, after some back and forth, we got the issue resolved by tightening a wire that had come loose on one of the power supplies. I was blown away by this service. Now, this was definitely an extraordinary situation and may not be the case every time because it was during off hours, but I've heard others tell similar stories. The bottom line is this, top-notch tech support saves you time, money, and stress, especially if you're in the middle of a customer job and something goes sideways. Next up, let's talk about something big, speed. We all know time is money, right? And if you're running a business, that couldn't be more true. The more products you can crank out in a day, the faster you get orders out the door, the quicker you get paid. Now look, you can start a laser business with a lower end machine. I know this because I've been there, I've done it. But those slower speeds, they meant a lot of long nights for my wife and I. Well, mostly my wife because she's way tougher than I am, but she's always pushing hard to get orders out on time. I'm not trying to discourage anyone who's just getting started with an entry level laser. If that's where you're at, more power to you. But let's be honest, it's a numbers game. You only get so many hours in a day. So being able to consistently run engravings at six to 800 millimeters a second, instead of two to 300 millimeters a second, that's a serious advantage. That's what you get with an industrial thunder laser, speed. Now, some lower end brands might claim engraving speeds of five, six, or even a thousand millimeters a second. But the reality is, in most cases, their motors, gantries, and drive systems just aren't built for that. That's why many of them limit speeds in the control settings to around 400 millimeters a second. And don't be fooled by high speed claims on lasers with glass DC tubes either. A lot of those tubes just can't pulse fast enough to keep up at higher speeds. But with the Bolt Pro 32, speeds up to 2,000 millimeters a second are entirely possible. You've got a precision drive system, a super lightweight laser head, and that powerful RF tube with a crazy fast pulse rate. Now sure, you still need the right project, something with enough room to accelerate and decelerate to hit those speeds, but the potential is there. And hey, we've been talking a lot about business, but what if you're not trying to run one? That's totally fine too. 
back when I was just making gifts for family or doing weekend projects in the garage, I only had so much time, an hour here, a few hours there. Being able to cut and engrave faster meant I could get way more done in the time that I had. Next, let's talk about something that really matters, budget and pricing. This is a topic that trips a lot of people up, especially when they're just getting started. A hobby grade laser might only cost you a couple thousand dollars up front, and on paper that sounds like a smart, budget-friendly way to dip your toes into laser work. But here's what I've learned. When it comes to equipment like this, you're not just buying a laser, you're buying speed, reliability, and future potential. And the lower cost options, they usually come up short in all three of those areas. Let's start with speed. Like I mentioned earlier, budget machines are slower. A job that takes five minutes on a thunder laser might take 20 minutes or more on a hobby machine. That may not sound like a big deal at first, especially if you're only doing one or two projects a week. But if you're selling products, whether it's on Etsy, local markets, or custom orders, that time adds up fast. Imagine running 20 jobs in a day. With a Thunder, that could be less than two hours of runtime. With a slower machine, you're talking six or seven hours just to produce the same output. That directly affects how many products you can make, how fast you can ship, and how much income you can generate. It's not just a workflow issue, it's a revenue bottleneck. Then there's consistency and downtime. One of the things that surprised me when I started out was how fragile some hobby lasers are. They might work fine out of the box, but a few months in, you start noticing alignment issues, tube degradation, inconsistent cutting power, or software glitches. Suddenly, you're spending more time fixing the machine than using it. You're ordering replacement parts, recalibrating, troubleshooting, all things that steal time and ultimately money. Compare that to an industrial grade machine like a Thunder. These are built for production environments. The components, motors, belts, rails, power supplies are all designed for daily use, high volume and long term reliability. You don't have to keep pausing your business to diagnose a new problem. And when something does come up, we've already talked about Thunder's incredible support and tons of replacement parts that are stocked here in the US ready to go. Now let's talk about the real cost, opportunity cost. Every hour you're tied up running slow jobs or fixing your machine is an hour you're not fulfilling orders, experimenting with new products or marketing your business. Those delays can hurt your reputation, affect your delivery timelines, and even cost you repeat customers. In today's world, speed isn't just a perk, it's expected. So yes, the initial price tag on a Thunder might feel intimidating, especially compared to cheaper hobby machines. But when you really break it down, it's not just a purchase, it's a business decision. It's an investment in faster production, fewer headaches, and the ability to scale your operation without constantly hitting roadblocks. And honestly, I wish I had understood this sooner. I spent a lot of late nights trying to squeeze every last drop of performance out of a machine that was never meant to handle the kind of workload I was throwing at it. Looking back, the money I saved on a budget machine, I think I might have paid for it 10 times over in lost time, missed opportunities, and unnecessary stress. If you're serious about turning this into more than just a hobby, if you want to grow, build a reputation, and actually enjoy the process, you've got to think long term. A Thunder Laser might cost more up front, but in the end, it's the smarter investment by a mile, I think. So next, let's talk about something a lot of people may overlook, pre-sale support. When I bought my first hobby laser, I was completely on my own. No one to ask questions, no guidance on what size machine I should get, and zero idea what accessories were actually necessary. Honestly, it was kind of a shot in the dark. I watched a ton of YouTube videos, dug through forums, and just hoped I was making the right call. And while I did learn a lot along the way, it was still really overwhelming and time consuming. Now, don't get me wrong, I love YouTube. I mean, you're watching this on YouTube and I built a whole channel around helping others with the exact kind of research I used to do. But here's the thing, YouTube is great for inspiration and general education, but it can't replace the clarity that comes from talking to a real expert direct from the manufacturer who knows the machines inside and out. That's where Thunder Laser really stands out. 
When I was getting ready to buy my Aurora 8 UV laser, I booked a pre-sales call with their team, and right away I knew I was in good hands. They didn't just try to sell me the most expensive option, they asked the right questions, figured out what I exactly needed, and helped me narrow down the best fit for my workflow. I had a ton of specific questions, like I wanted to start engraving glassware, right? And I needed to know if the glasses I planned to use would fit on the rotary attachment. That might sound small, but it's a huge deal when you're trying to build a product line around a certain machine. Thunder didn't just give me vague answers. They sent over actual photos of different rotary setups in use, along with precise measurements, so I could feel confident that I was making the right choice. Then, back when I was shopping for my first bolt, I had another big question. Will this machine actually cut one quarter inch MDF cleanly, and how fast can it do it? That was a deal breaker for me because that's a material I use all the time. Thunder just didn't say, yeah, probably, you know, it'll, it'll cut quarter inch material. They sent me a material test card showing all the power and speed settings tested on a real piece of quarter inch MDF. I mean, they literally made the test specifically for me. That allowed me to see the quality of the cuts, compare realistic speeds, and make an informed decision based on real world results, not guesses or just marketing fluff. That kind of support is honestly rare in this space. Most budget brands barely respond to emails, let alone offer this level of personalized help. Thunder made me feel like I wasn't just buying a machine. I was investing in a long-term partnership. And they gave me peace of mind I had never had for my first purchases. Whether you're starting a business, scaling an existing one, or just want to make the right choice the first time, this kind of pre-sales support is worth its weight in gold. It can save you from wasted time, wasted money, and a lot of regret down the line. So it really comes down to where you see yourself six months or a year from now. If you're just dipping your toes in the laser world, a budget machine might be the right call, and there's no shame in that. Everyone starts somewhere, and I genuinely believe it's better to start with something than to sit around waiting for the perfect setup. But if your goal is to build a side hustle, grow a business, or replace a nine to five income, then you've got to look at your laser as an investment, not just a tool. When I made the jump to Thunder, it wasn't just about getting a fancier machine, it was about buying back my time, gaining peace of mind, and giving my business room to grow without constantly bumping up against the limitations of cheaper hardware. So whether you're still doing your research or you're ready to pull the trigger, here's what I'd recommend. Think about your goals, both short-term and long-term. Be honest about how much time you can spend troubleshooting or waiting on parts. And don't underestimate the value of a machine that just works every single day. If you've got questions about Thunder Laser, entry-level machines, or even if you're trying to decide between two models, drop them in the comments below. I do my best to respond to as many as I can, and you'll probably see other folks in the community chime in too. Or check out the links in the description. I've got resources, files, and a link to a whole playlist of videos where I talk about the Thunderbolt Pro 32. Everything about it from my first impressions, cut and engraving tests, and even maintenance. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and maybe share it with someone else who's going through the same decision process. This channel is all about helping people succeed with laser engraving, and I've got a ton more content on the way. Thanks for hanging out in the garage with me today. I'll catch you on the next one.